Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Welcome back to the show. We've got a great guest for you today. We've got Joshua Webb, and he's a master of creative business branding, and he's also the founder of Growthly, a new business educational program featuring unique tactics for frustrated entrepreneurs that are seeking to find their right idea for them and start a business in 90 days. Joshua began his career after high school graduation by spending several years working with top industry professionals in digital design and packaging development for Eli Lilly and Bristol Myers Squibb. And during this time, Joshua got to flex his creative muscles and excelled at translating the vision of his clients into powerful digital communication. His career since evolved into brand and business creation. He's leveraging his years of experience in marketing and business consulting, and he spent 15 years assisting numerous new and existing businesses to build strong foundations from the ground up. And he's worked with franchises such as Opa Life, Care Patrol, and the UPS Store, among some of the brands that he's molded over the years. And Joshua has traveled and lived in several areas in the United States and recently has settled in Houston, Texas. After suffering several setbacks and failures in business, he became committed to assisting entrepreneurs to start strong businesses. And Joshua was driven by his desire to see others avoid the common pitfalls and eventual closures that affects 95% of businesses. He's recently started Growthly in late 2016 by hosting local meetup groups in Houston and sharing his personal experiences teaching tactics and techniques for growth opportunities. In February 2017, Joshua started construction on a training center located in Houston that is devoted to teaching and building up the next generation of successful entrepreneurs through his three-month program. And the hybrid program of an online content, live training, and weekend intensive covers the following, having the right idea that fits you, validating that idea before spending a lot of money on the business, and then building the business around the validated idea with customers ready to buy. Joshua, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm very glad to be here. Oh, you're welcome. We're glad to have you. And let's just get right into it. Tell us a little bit more about the clients and the people that you're helping. Sure. So my my background, as you mentioned, is in uh, branding and brand development. And so I've spent a lot of time working with franchise startups and working with mom and pop startups. And what we found over the years is that we, we kept working with them on the same basic tenets of, of pre-validating and starting their business with customers rather than jumping straight into launch. And so after spending so much time doing that, we just found that that product uh, needed to be created rather than that just being a part of us trying to fix things while we're on the move. And so as we started to do that, you know, over time, I, I would say to myself, this needs to be something that I do. And, and I kept denying that. And I kept waiting. Uh, for whatever reason, I just felt like it wasn't the right time or or maybe I didn't feel like I was the right person to guide them. Until one day, it just became very clear to me that this was the move for us. It was no longer a time to just be building websites and building brands and hoping for the best, but really taking folks down to the base elements and starting from the very beginning from their idea all the way through validation to execution so that we could make sure that when we poured gas on the fire as marketers, that there was a good foundation of that fireplace so that fire would continue to burn long instead of burn out fast. Awesome. Was there a specific time, do you remember, where you had the aha moment where you said, I'm all in and I'm moving forward in this? Do you remember that time? Or yeah, You know what? I'm going to be very – yeah, there, there's a very specific um, uh, moment that this happened, and it was about uh, two and a half months ago. My wife and I had to drive to Indiana uh, because my mother had passed away very suddenly. And we were on the, in this car driving up there, and uh, on this 14-hour car ride, 
I, I was just thinking out loud about, you know, my mom and she worked for the same company for 40 years and, and the legacy that she felt like she had left behind and the conversations that she and I had had about that. And I remember saying to my wife, Elizabeth, I said, you know, I, yes, I've built some, some, some brands. People can go to the restaurants that I've helped launch. People can go to the stores, but that's not my legacy. That's their legacy. And mm-hmm. I said, I, I remember thinking about that. And in that moment, uh, just making that, that decision, I came back to my heart's desire, which was to help people start successful businesses. And I said, you know what, I just, I need to do this because it's my responsibility. No one else is going to do this for me. No one else is going to step out into this business and make it happen for me. If this is what I want, I have to do this. And so, in, in fact, the entire concept for Growthly was, was birthed out of a 14-hour car ride to Indiana mm-hmm. when we were there connected with some of my, uh, my trusted companions, people that I speak to that they help speak into my life and shared this idea with them. After that back and forth, the 14 hour car ride back. I mean, this baby was already birthing. And mm. when we got back here to, uh, to Houston, we found the space, we connected with the landlord and we built the entire concept and location in under six weeks. And the reason that's important is because what we teach is speed. We teach that momentum is key, and we wanted to be able to show the people that are going to come to our program that we drink our own Kool-Aid. We had the idea. We quickly validated it by speaking to customers who would buy from us. We confirmed that our price points were going to be acceptable, and then we rented a location, and then we built a website, and then we started promoting our first events, not the other way around. So we're, we're definitely walking in the same path that we're educating folks. We're not the kind that are say, do what we say, not as we do. Mm. Excellent. Well, that's a great story. Thanks for sharing that with us. So along the way, you've probably experienced some inspiration. Did you find that in a book or a person or does anything stick out that's inspired you along the way? You know, I've had uh, quite a bit of inspirations. Um, One of late was a book that I read called Will It Fly? And this book uh, was all about validation. It was all about knowing, uh, being able to run litmus tests, being able to run real life tests uh, against a person's idea, concept, or business plan, and, and being able to see the data come back from that in real time from real customers. That, that book really opened uh, my eyes into the pre-validation model, which is so much better for young entrepreneurs or even seasoned serial entrepreneurs who keep saying to themselves, you know, this is a good idea. I just have to start this business and hopefully find customers. Mm-hmm. And we see these businesses close time after time, and they attribute that to, well, I just, you know, the customers didn't understand or um, they, the customers, I couldn't find the right one. And so what we're trying to say is neither of those things are actually true. What's really true is you, you weren't really sure what you were selling. So after I read that book about Will It Fly, it became concrete into my inner soul that validating a business before launching it is, is the very first step. Uh, you have to know that the customers are not only there, uh, but that they're willing to pay you the amount of money you need to charge. And even more, that they're the kind of people you want to spend time with. People jump into good ideas without realizing they're not a good idea for them, and then without realizing that the type of people that business attracts aren't people they want to be around. So they end up launching a job that they hate rather than a business that they love. And walking, reading that book really just gave me a lot of tools to be able to bring to the entrepreneurs and even to my own business and my own self to make sure that not only what am I launching is meets my personal goals, but it meets my customers' needs, and I know it does all those things before I even start promoting it to the world. Awesome. Yeah, I often hear somebody interested in opening a dry cleaning uh, place, and they're so focused on building the actual facility, but they didn't take time to figure out how many people actually go by the place during the day and things like that. And it's, uh, it's crazy how these business owners do that and not even validate it. Well, you know, I, I, I did the very same thing. Um, part of why I love teaching people to start businesses is because I have failed miserably at several myself. 
mm-hmm. mostly because I've done these same things that I, that we're talking about right now. I've I've made these same uh, bad decisions. I've I've jumped into different things, and just like you're talking about the dry cleaners, as a freelance uh, brand consultant, I decided one day I was going to save myself a ton of money. And I was going to open my own print shop. I would do a little bit of local printing. I would print my own things. And then I would save myself money and increase my margin. So when I was selecting my location, I didn't select my location based on traffic, uh, based on foot traffic, based on what was the anchor store in that strip mall. I made my decision based on how big I could get for the least amount of money. And so what I ended up with was a huge facility where no one came instead of a small facility that had a ton of foot traffic. And making those decisions as a small business owner, sometimes we make them on the bottom line. We want the cheaper rent for the bigger space Mm -hmm. because we think that's better. When maybe for this business, what I should have done was been next door to a grocery store where I was, where the foot traffic was, maybe I was going to pay double, but the business would have had legs. And Mm -hmm. so making sure that the, the folks we talk to and we work with that they have the opportunity to walk through all of these questions and, and these uh, these things that require more decision making than just I like this one I didn't like that one because at the end of the day it really doesn't matter what we like it matters where our customers will be and and what will help us succeed. Absolutely, that's a great point. So as you did your research, you uncovered uh, obviously the problem, but. What are you finding to be the biggest misconception when people are starting starting their businesses? So I think the biggest misconception is what the finish line is. I know we've alluded to this a little bit uh, back and forth about what we think the first thing should be, but what we have found the misconception to be is that a launched business is when I have an idea and then I go launch a Wix website, and I go to Vistaprint, and I get my business cards. I go to 99designs, and I get my logo. And I go to uh, LegalZoom, and I get my incorporation paperwork, and I'm done. That's the finish line we see in most people as they're describing to us the steps that they took to start their business. Mm-hmm. And nowhere in there was there any market research. Was there any validation that people even knew that they had the problem that the folks were trying to sell or that they needed the product that the folks were trying to sell? And when they come to us as the marketing company, maybe six months, a year after they've done this initial launch themselves, they come to us and they would say, hey, can you help us rebrand for some reason? Customers don't like us or they don't understand us. Uh, Or they would say, hey, can you help us uh, with some new sales strategies because we're having trouble closing? And and I would say, well, take me back to how you started your business. And they walk me through this simplistic approach of just reading a couple blog posts, or maybe they, they read these books. But what I was finding was, even if they were consuming the right information from the right people, they didn't have someone there to check and balance them with their own ideas and understandings. And so as we were finding the folks were missing the human input or the, the human aspect. So the, the, the human aspect is what they were missing. They were just missing someone to help them work through what, what their misconceptions were. As a, as a first-time business starter, they don't, they don't know what they don't know. And so even if they're reading all these blogs and these books, what they were having trouble with is so many contrary ideas. You know, one guy says this, the next guy says that. And how do they make the difference uh, between that? How do they understand really how to apply these things? And so that's why we decided that our model couldn't be just information product that someone consumed online. It had to have a one-to-one scenario. It had to have time where we personally, uh, my partner John and I, worked directly with them. And that's why we decided that our our program should be small, only 10 business owners per uh, per program so that we have enough time to go past just information into transformation. Perfect. Can you share with us an actual uh, case study of how you've actually helped someone from point A to point B? Uh, absolutely. So we've helped several people over the years uh, back in my marketing company, as I said. And, and one of those particular folks uh, was a stay-at-home mom who wanted to open a candle shop. And, and she wanted to open a retail store. 
And so she came to me and she said, Josh, this is what I want to do. I want to open this big store on the mall and we're going to sell all these candles and we're going to, you know, be very successful. And I, I just simply asked her and I said, well, how, how do you know that? And she says, well, I go on the mall and there's all these candle stores, so they must be selling my hotcakes. And I said, well, do you know that? Have you seen sales reports? Have you done walkthroughs of those stores and see, you know, on a daily basis to see what kind of sell through they have? And she said, no. And so I said, well, why don't we do that? And so we, we took a little time. This is, of course, before the program was fully fleshed out, but we just we did some surveys of some local stores. We walked through and took uh, shots with our phones to see the product and how it was sitting on the shelves, and we did that for several days. And to her surprise, uh, the sell-through was actually quite slow. Um, those businesses weren't making very much money. Uh, and if she was to do that, she was going to lose a lot of money in her rental of the space there in the mall because it's very expensive. Mm. So instead, we pivoted her to an online brand, which to her felt very impersonal. Uh, it didn't. It wouldn't have been a decision that she would have made. But we launched it as an online company and then gave her the ability to do kiosk-based selling either at a mall for one day or go to uh, the very popular craft shows in the southern Arizona area and Phoenix area and do pop-up shops where she can continue to have that one-on-one -on -one feeling that she needs without – the five-year, you know, lease signing that's just going to kill her business because it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. And she was very successful. She, again, was a situation she wouldn't have chose, but because we helped walk her through that, um, she ended up being able to, to be in business a long time versus maybe closing after 12 to, you know, 24 months. That's excellent. You know, it's such a disheartening where these businesses get started and because of a little research or some things that they didn't, you know, look through that, you know, they're out of business in several years. So, well, you know, what's the national average now? I know it's high in five years that most businesses go out of business, but can you share with us what that statistic looks like we, now? Sure. Dur during some of the research, what we've found is that 95% of businesses within 24 months will suffer some sort of catastrophic situation. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they close, but it means that they either have to find massive financial infusion um, or that their, their product has to be retooled or that they have actually closed. And, and really, honestly, that is such a staggeringly high statistic that 95% will suffer some sort of catastrophic event that they, if they pull out of it, it's it's tantamount to a miracle. Uh, some do. That's why we don't say that 95% of businesses close, but they come to the point where they, they should or m probably would, uh, if not for getting involved with some type of accelerator or a business consultant who is there to help them get out of that situation and succeed. And, and that's even a dangerous spot. Uh, we know of a lot of predatory groups that are out there who look like you know, a saving grace for a small business who needs to kind of make that turnaround. And they turn out to be just places that want a monthly payment and don't really get invested emotionally in the launch of their clients or, or the, the success of their clients. They're there to make dollars. Mm. And myself, John and I, we, we come from a much different background. We're both self-made people where we started with, you know, our families were very uh, poor and we've worked for everything that we've had. And so when we're working with folks in that situation, we really see and understand them. And we have a concept. It's one of our, it's one of our kind of core tenants in our company. And it's basically this community, not kingdom. We, we seek to create and cultivate strong, lasting community relationships. We don't seek to be kings atop a hill with all our subjects below us. And that's just a, a common feeling that we get in a lot of larger organizations that they just feel like kings, uh, look at us, we're so popular, we're so awesome, we do this great work, and everyone is kind of slightly below us. And, and we just believe in turning that pyramid upside down and really growing from the bottom and making sure that we're putting our, our clients and our employees at the top and not us because their success is our success. If our success is all you see, it just feels untrustworthy. And, and so that's, uh, that's something that's very important to us. Excellent. What would you say would be the, for the listener, what would you say would be the first thing that they should do 
they're thinking about starting a business. What I mean, you talked about some things sure. that they're doing backwards, but what would you recommend that they do first? So here, here's one of our first things that we teach in the program, and it's really simple. In fact, it's so simple that a lot of folks just overlook it. And if you're thinking about starting a business and you want to know if it is a, an idea that's popular or if it's an idea that people are interested in, go to Amazon and search through the books that are there. If you find a book or several books that meet the same keyword criteria of this idea that you're having, then that's your first validator that there is a market. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a good market. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a market for you. So here's one of the things that we suggest is you go down through these books and read the reviews. What sort of people are talking about this? Are they generally angry or are they generally pleased with the book? Uh, make sure you do read all the negatives and the positive reviews for those books so that you get a good, solid understanding of what this market looks like. If then, after you've found several of these books, you see the reviews are, are working in, in favor of your, of your concept or your idea, you, you can just immediately, within just an hour or so, have a validation that it's worth pursuing. Because what we find with a lot of folks is they say, Josh, I have 10 great ideas. I just don't know which one. Mm. And so we always say that doing initial Google search, doing an initial Amazon search, and finding some people that are already doing it is key. A lot of folks think that if I can come up with an idea that no one else has thought of, that's going to make me millions of dollars. <laughs> and what we try to help them understand is it, it'll make you a lot of money if you have a lot of money. Because when you create a new category, when you create a new service, get ready to educate everybody about what this thing is and why they need it. And that is a long road to hoe. <laughs> Excellent point. I'm laughing because I've been there. I mean, that's the only reason why. But the, it's, uh, yeah. So that's great advice. Thanks for sharing that. So tell us about yeah. your training center and what you got going on there. Absolutely. So we were super excited. It took us a, a little while to find the right space, and we were able to find uh, 5,000 square feet just off of the Galleria uh, at 6363 Richmond Avenue. Uh, and we were able to then leverage that space into creating not just a learning lab where we can fit up to 40 people uh, for ourselves or any other business that needs training space. We were also able to create a co-working space uh, there. And I'll tell you why that's important. When we would consult with people and help them create their business, the next thing they did is they would run out and grab some expensive office space from major brands that we won't mention here. And then they come to me a little bit later and ask me, how can they get out of these agreements? Because they find that these companies are, there's all kinds of extra charges in their monthly invoice. They don't understand why one price that they were told was all-inclusive wasn't all-inclusive. Mm. And so it was important to me that as we help people launch businesses that don't need brick-and-mortar locations, we gave them a safe place to land, somewhere that they would be able to operate their business and know their budget without fear of wondering month to month what their service charges were going to be. Then as we got started with this build out, uh, our building owner became so invested in our concept and, and what we were creating. Uh, he worked with us to source another location uh, in Regency Square Boulevard where we are going to be uh, finishing construction in June on 16 individual Class A office suites. So what we're able to do here is we're able to create an ecosystem where someone can start a business and take the smallest amount of space that they need at our co-working space until they grow, evolve into our executive suite. And then my goal, my hope is that these people always outgrow us. Uh, possibly the hope is within 24 months that they're exiting all of our facilities and they're entering one of their own. And then we're able to then help foster them along the way. They're, they're inside the organization, uh, and we're able to help them control costs. And so that's, that was really important to us. As we finished out working on all of these parts, we, we started realizing that there was one last piece of our puzzle that we needed, and that was a video studio. And so as we began selecting the area uh, of our office where we're going to put that video studio, I was creating the concept what we're going to use it for, justifying the cost. And it, it hit me that we teach video is so very important. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't we offer this to our students and to our members as well? And so as this idea took shape, 
it kind of became something interesting. And we're, we're kind of coining the phrase Facebook Live TV. Mm-hmm. What, what it is is we're helping people understand that leverage Facebook Live in a way that some folks are doing and the ones who are doing it are killing it. You're doing a regular segment uh, just like your radio show here but live. And, and the reason that that is important is because Facebook is the only medium right now that alerts your members when you're talking right? Mm. You could do videos and you can put it on YouTube. It's still findable. You can put it on Vimeo. You can put it on uh, lots of different places, but Facebook is the only place that's saying someone's talking right now. And so we're helping uh, create this space where small business owners who don't have the fifteen to $20,000 to invest in all the equipment like we're doing, that they can come and use that space and be able to leverage it to grow their brand and grow their business through regular uh, segments to their audience. Excellent. Excellent. So I don't want to date the broadcast, but you've got some things coming up here pretty quickly and people can find out more about that. And tell us about your event you have coming up scheduled here. Sure. We've got one event coming up. Uh, it is going to be May the 13th, a Saturday morning. Uh, we are only allowing 25 people into this event because there is a heavy work working together one-on-one uh, situation in the afternoon, but I'll tell you what it is. It is how to get publicity and media coverage mm-hmm. for your business. And a lot of people tell me, they're like, no one cares about my story. No one cares about my little old company or my little idea. And and you know what? It's that attitude that keeps these people from finding the success through media that they can have. Because one of the best things that I get to do is I get to tell people that the truth is folks want to hear your authentic story. They want to hear about your struggles. They want to hear about your successes and your failures, and they want to hear about you yourself. No, they, they don't want another polished segment where they, you talk about perfection and how you never failed and how you entered in this business and your product is fantastic. They want to hear about the true you. And when you tell that story, just like I was able to do through the models and the, the uh, steps that we teach, I was able to get media coverage without paying any money. I have an article coming out in Huffington Post, and I have another article coming out in Entrepreneur. And it was through the steps that we teach at this workshop how to find these contributors that are good for you, that understand the story that you're telling, and forming a relationship with them where in some cases you don't even have to pitch them. The relationship that you build with them has them ask you, can I write about you? And so this, this is what we teach. We have some great speakers. Uh, Erica Holloway is going to be teaching. Uh, she's a Houstonian native. She's going to be teaching us how to give a great interview, how to present yourself well, how to write your story and craft it in a way that is moving. Uh, Vanessa Wade is going to teach her uh, to talk about the one-hour brand, how to create long-lasting relationships with some of these contributors, in some cases, in as little as an hour. I'm going to be teaching how to... Uh, locate these um, these contributors that are good for you because it is really important to make sure that they're they're good for your subject matter. They can't you can't just reach out to every contributor for uh, ink or entrepreneur and hope for the best. You you really have to target well. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, Christina Torres Cruz who's going to be coming in and teaching. Once you get this media, how do you leverage your social media uh, coverage and your social media communities? to get the most out of this coverage that you can. Uh, so that's, that's going to be the morning. That's our morning till our lunch. And then in the afternoon, which is what makes us different, we're not just going to teach you and say goodbye. In the afternoon, you get opportunities to work with each one of the speakers and do hands-on approach to everything that you learned this morning because we want people to leave doing the stuff. We don't want people to leave with notes that they put on a shelf. Excellent. To find out more about your facility and other events, where would they go to? How they find out more? So right now, if you just go to growthly.com, that's G-R-O-W-T-H-L-I.com, uh, the home page right there is going to be the splash page for our event. Uh, there you can also find our phone number as well. Um, you can reach out to us through our email at takeaction at growthly.com. And uh, we'll get back with you very, very, very quickly. Uh, we also have, uh, like I said, on our website, uh, growthly.com, you can fill out a form there as well and connect with us many different ways. You can find us on Facebook uh, at uh, facebook.com slash growthly. Um, 
really a ton of ways to do that. Or you can connect here with the radio show, and they'll have our information as well. Awesome. Yes, we'll have all that in the notes and the description below, so make sure you check it out. Well, congratulations on your success and your training center. It's a much-needed service, and I look forward to the future of collaborating, possibly. So thanks again for being on the show. Absolutely. You're so very welcome. Thank you for having us. Well, there you have it for this edition of the show. We'll see you the next time. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.